What's going on, folks? Yet another car vlog on Napalm 2009's channel. Hope you're having a good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is you may be doing. And I also hope you enjoy this vlog. I have one other car vlog on this uh, channel. And it's a two-part vlog. And it belongs to the Mazda 3 which is a 2006 hatchback, 16 valve, 2.6 liter. Pretty decent car. I enjoyed it. About 25 uh, miles to the gallon. Yeah, about 25 miles to the gallon. You could fill her up for about 25, 30 bucks. Couldn't beat it. That was the Mazda 3. Put some 12s in the back of it, of course. Got to keep the subwoofers up. Had a nice little Bluetooth modification so I could hook my iPad, my iPod up. Had a few things going on the Mazda. Here we are today. Our second car vlog on the channel. This is Chevrolet Cobalt. That was 2008. And it is indeed a luxury sport edition. If I could have got the Super Sport. I would have got it. The SS, I would have got it. But I have the LS here. It's a 2008, and it's definitely an official Chevy Cobalt. General Motor car can do about 20 miles to the gallon. It's most certainly not my favorite part. Well, it depends on how you drive the car. If you're heavy on your pedal, you will be going to the gas station a whole lot more um, than you would if you had a Honda. If you had a Honda, you'd be getting good gas mileage, no matter what kind of Honda you get. You have to get a really beat up Accord or a really beat up Civic to not get good gas mileage out of a Honda. Or a Toyota for that matter. Or a Mazda for that matter. But this is a Chevy. It is not a Honda. It is not a Toyota. And it is not a Mazda. But if I was to get any Chevy, it would be this one. As, as far as... As far as being practical and as far as being reliable, not really having a lot of issues, I did a little bit of research on this car. I didn't research any other, any, uh, well, I don't want to say any of the other cars I ever got, but I didn't research um, the Mazda before I got it, uh, and I didn't research the Pontiac before I got it. I got those cars uh, so, solely because they were a good deal, okay? I saw the Pontiac and it was extremely cheap. Okay, it wasn't a lemon, but it definitely wasn't in it wasn't in the best shape that it could have been for the price I paid. And the Pontiac G6 was actually from a dealer, um, and so you know I expected you know you know professional care. I expected it for it to be a good car. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> Dealers do sell lemons. Dealers do scam you, especially if they see somebody young trying to get a new car. They will definitely scam you out of your money and out of your time. And spending, you know, pouring thousands more dollars into the car trying to get it to work. They will scam you. Um, and with the Mazda, the Mazda was actually a pretty good car. But when I got it, once again, there, there, there were issues. I had to pour maybe about 400 to 500 extra dollars, extra dollars into the Mazda in order to get it to run. Um... Unfortunately, um, I had to let that car go. What I did was I sold it because I needed some money real bad, and my job was right on the bus line. So I just went ahead and I got rid of it. I sold it, and um, I got a pretty penny out of it. Um, I got maybe about an extra stack, about an extra grand more than what I paid for the car. So I came out okay. You know, I left the sounds in it. I left the Bluetooth, you know, adapter and everything. All the little, all the, all, all the small modifications that I did to the car, I just left it and I just, you know, added an extra stack and it sold. So here we are today. This is our second car vlog. And uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, roll up on it? This vlog is going to be relatively short because a i just got the car so i haven't done anything to it there's no modifications there's actually some things that need to be worked on on this car actually <laughs> again you didn't learn yes again when i got the car he didn't tell me about the hub bearings until you know upon meeting the guy 
So when I met him, he said the hub bearings, he gave me this, you know, mechanic guy and everything like that. He told me to hit him up. And when I hit him up and heard the price, yeah, hub bearings for these, you know, for these Chevys, for these Cobalts aren't really uh, cheap, you know. So, um, as you can see, yeah, tags, just got it. Um, the tail light seemed fine. It's a lot of dirt. I need to wash the car. Get a new Chevy symbol here. This one's starting to deteriorate. Maybe I'll get like a blue one or a black one or something. These tail lights look okay. This is, looks like a little issue right here. Maybe I can push that in or find some more notches. Uh, find something to hold that in. That's not a big deal. Uh, let's see. It's a lot of scrapes on these rims down here. Plastic little hubcaps you can put on. Tire grip seem pretty good. Yep, the tire grip seemed pretty well. Um, like I said, the car is definitely dirty. And there there is some things that need to be worked on with the car. Um, like this here, this panel. These panels tend to stick out, I see. Well, that one stayed. The other one didn't stay. I pushed this one in and stayed. I had to get a new tire on this one already. I rolled over a nail or something and uh, blew the tire out. So I had to already do that. This is the GM logo here. That's normally on all Chevy cars, I believe. This is my actually my first. No, this is my second General General Motors car, as I said with the Pontiac. Here I'm having a hood issue. With this hood, this hood don't want to stay down. So what I have to do is push it every time I get out the car. Every time I drive it, it'll be it don't flip all the way open and flap open and look like the car is talking on the freeway. But what will happen is, is it will slightly lift up. And you can tell if it's slightly lifted. Like, I think I can show you. I lift, lift the hood up on it anyway to see what's up in here. Got a whole lot of leaves. Birds making nests in here once again. We got a whole lot of uh, dust and dirt that need to be cleaned out. This is Ecotech. So this is an Ecotech engine. Something I have not heard about. I know it's supposed to be 2.2. Um, I haven't really tested it on the freeway. Um, it definitely got some get up. Like it's definitely more of a muscle car than uh, a small Japanese kind of compact car. It's more of an American kind of feels like an American kind of rev your engine kind of car. To whereas the Civic is more practical. The Accord is more you know, it's more like a regular street car. This car is. It'll make you want to race, you know, when you put your foot on the pedal, when you rev it, <clears throat> you know, you want to race. You, know, you, you, you don't have to push this car a lot in order to get it to speed up, in order to get it to show its power. You don't have to push it. Um, but you can if you want, you know, if you're a professional racer, you know, by all means, push it. So you got your, I guess, your, wind, your windshield fluid here. I'm sorry, windshield fluid here. Uh... I don't even know. think this is for the air conditioner here. Got a fuse box right here. Of course, is the engine. We put the oil. I need to get an oil change soon. I got at about 13%. And I've got a big valve here. I'm going to see if I can put my air intake on this. That might be cool. I got an air, air intake I can put. Maybe it'll help me save on gas right here. But here, I can show you this hood problem. You see what I mean? It won't. It doesn't shut doesn't shut all the way so like for instance when I lift this up I pull it I go ahead and shut it and it'll still be lifted that's not good like right there that's about how it is how it's stuck that's about how it's stuck like that and when I start driving it'll it'll pop back open in this way it'll pop back open so I have to push it you know Every time I get out the car to, you know, go home, whatever, or, you know, whenever I'm done driving for the day, I have to um, push that hood down. And it's just uncomfortable for me. It's not like it's a bad thing, but, I, you know, me personally, I just, I don't know. I just don't want my hood cracked open. You know, bugs and birds can get in. I don't know. I mean, you know, somebody might see it's open and try to open it or something. I don't know. I just feel more comfortable with my car hood being completely shut 
when I'm gun when I'm in for the night or from you know at work or from at the library and I don't want to worry about my car. You got the headlights going, definitely a rough spot right here. That's an easy fix. Both of these lights are definitely not the same. This one needs to be cleaned. And I saw this video with this guy. He had he had um an amazing video on how to completely restore your headlight to the point where um you can see your light clear again like this light over here is not bad but it could use it definitely but this you can't even almost can't even see out of this it's completely fogged out look like somebody had a smoke box in the light in the headlight um so again we got a symbol right here this one can use it use a new symbol as well new chevy right there I might get a red one or a blue one um the bottom bumper is not at all uh too bad uh, I'm going to get another tag, or when I get my plates, I'm going to stick one in the front. And then this here, I actually did this. Once again, um, I'm learning that me, I am not the best driver in the world. So, I caught myself pulling into this really narrow uh, driveway. I was at my friend's house, and almost like the same story with the, with, with the ladies' driveway. I was pulling into my friend's driveway, and what happened was um, I couldn't see the building. So, but by the time it was too late, you know, the car had already crunched into the building. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still learning. <laughs> obviously, I don't really know uh, how to drive all like that, obviously. I didn't think I was too bad. But there's still some things that I could learn about driving, apparently, because I thought I knew what I was doing. But apparently, I do not. But it's cool. Like I said, you live and you learn. This is what we do. This is why we do this. So this is going to be, I'm thinking, should I just get a whole new bumper, a whole new fender, or what? I don't know. Because you have to pull that. That's that's like punctured in. That's going to have to be sucked out, pulled out. Somebody told me I can pour piping hot water over it, and that'll pop right out. I don't know if it's... If it's carved that deep into this plastic, that deep into this fender, but this fender can, can pop off. This whole fender here can pop completely off, and you can put a new one. But I'm thinking, is it worth it? Because it's only this little spot right here. And then if I if I replace this part, this whole front bumper got to come off. And that's going to be 100, 200. I don't know how much the fenders, how much the bumpers are on these Cobalts. I'm pretty sure they're not $50. They're not cheap. So that's another thing. All right. So that definitely has to be taken care of, taken care of real soon before rust gets worse. Paint starts chipping. The whole thing end up being black, and I'm riding around in a cop car. That's not what we want. Tires down here got excellent tread. Got those hubcaps again. Those plastic hubcaps. Another GM logo. And uh, we're back around to the rear. Good tread on this tire. Th that other tire I got don't have the best tread on it. I only paid the guy 40 bucks. That uh, front right tire got the LS, got the Cobalt on there. And uh, yeah. So what we can do now is uh, go ahead and I guess see what's in the trunk. Oh, man, got some 15s, man. Got some 12s. Oh, man. Nope. If I can open it. Is there a special way to open these Chevys? These Chevy trunks? Got the key. Uh-oh. Look like I won't be opening it today. I'm trying to get it open. Let's see. Nope. Maybe you have to do it from inside. So let's pop the door. Walk inside. And up under here we see a trunk logo right here we pull this we see a trunk button right here and we hit that and I guess that's the way we have to do it and somebody left a nice mess in there for me to clean I'm gonna have to get that so I heard a pop let's see what happens alright I heard it pop Huh. 
Not getting no love with this trunk. Wonder what's going on. Is it stuck? The key's not stuck. Oh, it was stuck. I guess from the rain and I don't know. Whatever else was going on. Oh, it's a lot of stuff back here. Somebody has some kind of family, whoever had this car. It's a lot of junk back here. Coupons, used coupons. <laughs> uh, hand warmers. Yeah, somebody had a family back here. It's like, I think these are rugs, rug mats. Got some oil. At least now I know what kind of oil the car take. Got a battery. I don't know if this battery is new or, or what. I can get it tested. Uh, man, let's see. Uh, motor trend. Okay, so, so this person was really into his car. Oh, look, somebody got the old tag back here. Check it out. I thought I was in luck for a minute. Thought I was getting happy. Free tag. No. Let's see what's in here. What's this? Oh, somebody left me a snack. Oh, okay. Got a whole snack back here. Some crackers or something. I eat those tonight, I guess. With some cheese. Somebody left some stuff back here. Some dad stuff. Ah, a whole cup of lemonade was back here. So yeah. Anyway, the most important lesson of this. The most important uh lesson of this is say, it got the perfect bay for my speakers. The perfect space for my twelves to go. It's not the biggest trunk. It's got some room once you go up in there. It looks pretty small, but once you actually look inside, you got room way over here. Check this out. My hand can reach all the way deep up in here. My hand can reach all the way deep up in there. And go all the way to the back to where you see there's a whole nother section. Back, even back beyond this right here, there's another section in the back. So definitely room for speakers and groceries and other uh, stuff you got to lug around. And, uh, yeah. So I guess that's the trunk of the car. <sighs> guess let's go ahead and uh, check out the inside. As you can see, it is two door. It's not four door. So if you got company, you're gonna have to do it the old school way. Pull your latch and push the seat back. And once you do that, you got stuff back here. See, you got room back here for people, kids, whatever you need to do. You're pretty much good. So let's hop in the driver's seat. And see what the bay looks like. Here's the cockpit of the Chevy Cobalt 2008. Let's shut this up. And we are inside. Here is the radio. There's the radio. Uh, which comes with the aux, aux, um, auxiliary port. Comes with the auxiliary port. Simply amazing, all right? The last couple cars I had, no auxiliary port, okay? The last couple cars I had was from were from 04 and 06, and they did not feature an auxiliary. I had to use um, a cigarette, um, a cigarette um, Bluetooth adapter. I had to literally plug it into the car in order to get a signal to travel to my iPod, my uh, iPad, etc., my computer, etc. Um, but uh, yeah, as you can see, this comes with the auxiliary, so you really cannot beat it at all. Can't beat it. Um, yeah. So uh, I mean, it's a pretty plain and simple dash, or I'm sorry, not dash. It's a it's a pretty plain and simple radio. I mean, you got your I don't know what this clock is for. I guess that's a timer to set the clock. You got your favorites. You got a menu here. You got the eject for CDs. You got a CD mode. You got, uh, what's this? A cat mode. I don't even know what cat is. Um, yeah, so I'm pressing it, and it's not doing anything, but it says cat. I don't know what cat does. Then there's a music mode here where you can actually change the bass, the treble, all that stuff. Um. Yeah, you got your fast forward here. You got your re you got your rewind, or you got your reverse. 
get your CD and aux button, which is magic. Different bands for the radio. You can seek out different stations on the radio. And also, you got the all-famous power, power button. Down here is where you got your heating and cooling. It's getting kind of hot, so I had it on cold. And it did get pretty cold. It took a little while to get cold. Um, took a hot minute to really, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to say, uh, you know, heat the car up or to freeze the car or to cool down the car. But it did its job. It did. It made it a lot cooler than it was outside. And I haven't I haven't really tested it in sweltering weather yet. So but the weather is about to get sweltering. We all know this is June, July coming up. Uh, we just hit May and I'll test it out when the weather gets real hot. By then, I might have them speakers. I might be able to plug them up and see how they sound with the stock speakers that came with the Cobalt. If the stock speakers sound good with the 12s or with the 15s, then I'm going to leave them. If they don't, I'm going to um, I'm gonna, uh, try to find like some decent door speakers, some decent tweeters, some decent mids to put in here just to you know enhance the sound. Like I said, I'm a, I'm, I'm a music guy. I like to hear my music. I like to experience it. You know, but the stock the stock radio that came in here ain't bad. What up, though? It's your boy Big Snoop D O Double G. Keep your radio locked in with Incognito. Yeah, it is. We posted on the cone now. Incognito. Yeah. How much money you got? A lot. How much money you got? A lot. How many problems yeah, you got? So, a lot. How many I people that doubted a lot? Left you out to rock. Stop radio. It's not that bad. How many to just be a regular radio, that's actually pretty loud. Um, to just, like I said, to just be a stock machine with no added sounds, no added speakers, no added nothing. Okay, this is, you know, you know, no, you know, no enhancements, just regular stock sound. That's pretty good. That's pretty loud. That's actually probably one of the best stocks. I'd rather be broke in jail than be dead and rich. Tell yeah. My brothers, take my that's actually one of the. That's actually one of the best stocks. Um. You know, um, that I've heard. One of the best stock sounds that I've heard. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking I just, I just need a little extra bump in the back. Um, you know, you know, a little something from the subwoofers just to, you know, I like, I like my rides to really rattle. You know, I really, I really, I, I really like my rides to really, you know, music and riding to me is just both go hand in hand. Okay. Can't beat a good pair of woofers, and you got them hooked up to a nice stock sound. You can't beat it. Um, let's see. Uh, then you got this side over here. Um, got your gas fuel, gas gauge. Obviously, got your revolutions per minute gauge over here. Over here, yeah, over there. And you got your miles per hour gauge over here. All right. Obviously, you got your turn signal, your windshield wipe. Well, that's your that's your windshield wiper on this side here, which I did have to use. It got rain crazy. Started raining crazy last week. Of course, you got your headlights, your high beams. Got to control it on here. For some reason, my left my left turn signal um, won't. Uh, it for some reason it won't stick. It won't stay. Like I don't know if it's the um, if it's the um, if it's the way I'm doing it, or if it's something wrong with the left turn signal, or what, I have no idea. But um, yeah, so something is really stuck about the left, and I have to fix it because when I'm on the road, sometimes I have to hold down my left turn signal. You know, with my hand, I have to literally hold it for the work, and you know that's not good. Like just like just now, I'm showing you, my right it sticks. Go to the left. Okay, now it sticks. See, like that's a, that's a problem. If you're on the road, it's real important that you're paying attention to, you know, where you're driving, where you're going, and it's also very important for you to realize you cannot be fiddling around with a turn signal and it's other cars and other traffic in the way. That is very dangerous. You can't be fiddling around with a turn signal like that. Very dangerous. Okay, very dangerous. Um, but that's about the only issue there. This I have not even used yet. I'm scared to touch it. What is this? Set coast, and then you got 
resume Excel. I don't I don't even know. I don't I don't even know what this what that's for. Yeah, I don't need I don't I don't even know what that's for. I'm gonna have to get the manual and read that and actually see exactly what that's for. Um but yeah, as you can see, this is not the fully loaded edition of this cobalt because we would have had some volume options, you know, some radio seeking and stuff over here. But instead, we just got this info button and um, it's not doing anything because I got the car off. So let's put the battery on. Let's uh, flip these lights off and let's see about um, this. Um, this check engine light that just popped up because I have never seen that zero miles per gallon because the car is not moving average speed is about 15 miles per hour oil life is on 13 percent the cooling is 145 Fahrenheit I have to figure out uh, if that's good or not or if that's um, if you know 145 is good for coolant in the car if it's not good what I'll have to do is figure out the proper temperature for the coolant to be and uh, make sure it stays at that temperature without, you know, falling off. Then you got the left left front and right front. The PSIs are not um, matching up. So I have to let some air pressure out of the right front, which I just showed you guys. That's the tire that I just got replaced uh, last week. So let me uh, I'm, uh, find a way to release some air out of that right front tire. And once I do that... Um, I should be good because yeah, the rest of them are even the left right. I'm sorry the left rear and The right rear are 31 every all the other tires are 31 and the right front one is like 45 or something So I'm gonna see about that that'll actually help your gas mileage too and help your car to run balanced uh, Let's see. I'm at 50 Fahrenheit here and as you can see there is the mileage on this car. All right now you might say, man, that's pretty high, man. You know, this is not a Mazda. You know, this is not, you know, <laughs> you know, this is not, uh, you know, it's not a Toyota, you know. But as I said, I did my research. This car, well taken care of, well maintenance, can go for at least 200 miles on, the, on one engine. 200 miles on one engine. Okay, if you really take care of it, you can get 300, but you really have to take care of the car. Chevys are not really meant for you to dog and, you know, dismiss and treat them like any. They don't take a beating like that. You got this certain maintenance you have to keep up with. Like, you cannot skip your oil change. You can't skip, you know, your tire rotation. You have to keep the maintenance up on a Chevy. That's that's what I believe anyway. I could be wrong. Like I said, I'm not a car guru. I'm not this expert dude in cars. But um, I just remember my dad driving cars and my uncles and my friends and I remember, you know, my dad always buying Hondas or always buying Mazdas or always buying Toyotas. And he would always say that, you know, they make the best cars. And even when you look online, um, you know, you can see many different, um, you know, automobile uh, champions, you know, racers. And, you know, everybody's just putting on Honda and Toyota. They just make such, you know, reliable vehicles. But I got this car, like I said, because it was a special deal that's why i got this car it was very special and i had no choice but to get it you know i needed some transportation it was right within my price range and it's an 08 okay it's the highest year car i've ever owned um i have driven at least a 2014 i drove it for about a year and it was a luxury vehicle like when i tell you it was luxury there's a camera here so when you you know when you back up when you put your car in reverse oh put my finger in the way when you put your car in reverse here and you pull back and you go in reverse, there's a camera that actually shows you what is behind you. So you don't even really have to look in the rear view. It shows you a street view of what's behind you. 2014 Honda CRV. Um, one of the best cars I ever drove. It was really smooth. Um, it can fit a whole lot of people, had all the trunk space you could need. And it wasn't, you know, for it to be kind of an SUV kind of vehicle. It wasn't really too big and too hard to control. It, it controlled almost just like, you know, a nice regular city car. Like, you almost wouldn't even know you was in a car until you got out and looked from the outside and say, I was driving that big truck. Oh, wow. You know? So, uh, shout out to that 2014. 
Uh, if I got the opportunity to lease or get another one, I'm definitely going to get it. But until then, I'm going to be on this 08. And um, like I said, normally I wouldn't get Chevy. I wouldn't purchase a Chevy car. Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do anything like that. But you know what? I figured why not go out the box? It could definitely use a cleaning. Dude definitely did not detail it before he sold it to me. Um, and... Yeah, it could definitely use a good detailer. Seats are a little dirty a little bit. The little door over there is a little dirty over there. Put some new silver paint on that handle. Yeah, I got the switch going. I was downloading or updating something. I don't know what I was doing with this. Let's see. Why not have a switch break real quick? Oh, I was downloading some games. I wanted to see how long it would take to download this Mortal Kombat because I know it's it's freaking huge. Like the file on here is just out of pocket, you know. Just out of control type, you know. Um so I guess that's something to look at. Um man, that Mortal Kombat is serious, so let's see. It's dwindling. It's dwindling down. The time is dwindling down. If it says two hours, I might stay and wait the whole two hours. Because I really want to play <laughs> that uh that new um, Mortal Kombat game. I've, it, it's, it's been sitting on this Switch since the 23rd of uh, April. It's been sitting on the Switch since release. Just been waiting to be played. And we stuck at three hours. So I don't think I'm going to wait three hours here I don't two hours I probably could have did it I mean the time is kind of going down pretty fast maybe one day I'll pull up and I'll wait the whole time but right now um nah man I can't I can't even do it I can't even wait a whole three hours so I'm gonna hit cancel yep and uh I'm gonna just pull this Put the switch back in sleep mode for for a hot second. Yeah, like I said, one day I'll, I'll sit down and wait. I'll chill in the car, grab a snack. Um, like I said, I would have did it today. Um, you know, but three hours is just is kind of ridiculous. That's something that even I can't even, you know, you know, have patience with. But overall, this is pretty much uh, the Chevy Cobalt. This is just a quick overview. Of the whole car. In a nutshell, do I enjoy it? It's something different. It's gassy. It's gassy. That's for sure. Costs a whole lot of gas. To keep this thing going. I'm used to getting Mazdas and Hondas and things and Toyotas, but um, I can't complain about it. It's a car. It's a point A to point B car, and uh, that damage definitely needs to be fixed. And like I said, there's definitely a few things need to be worked on. I need to get some hub bearings for the car. Oh, look, we got a buddy up there. We got a whole family of them coming out. They always come out. Forgot about them. Usually bring some apples and oranges for them or something, something for them to eat. But, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much uh, it, man, um, with this car. That's like the quick, oh, yeah. And there's some rust issues, too. Definite rust issues. On the car, something, something, something was up with the focus. Something has really been up with the focusing. Okay. So yeah, it's been some real rust issues, as you can see. It's about the last thing uh, I can touch on here. Yep, yeah, that, that rust is nasty. That's gonna have to be fixed quickly too before it gets worse it will spread all over your car and destroy your entire car look at this you can't really see from far away but when you get up under it you will notice disgusting terrible rust terrible rust that need to be looked at immediately and I looked the whole video up and it's on the other side as well I looked the whole video up on how to clean this rust and on how to um how to uh, fill it up. I'm going to get some foam filler. 
I'm gonna fill these sides up. I'm gonna sand them down. I'm gonna get some of that paint. Go over it. Get some of that putty. Smooth it out. Let it harden up. It's definitely uh, a job. So this is my latest project as far as um, cars are concerned. This is my latest ve ve vehicular project. Um, just something to work on. Like I said, for now, I'm not really trying to show off a race or nothing like that. Or, you know, bump my sound system all out, put some fancy LEDs. Not doing all that yet. I just want to get it back to where it's supposed to be on stock. Like, probably put some new hubcaps. Maybe I'll put the 12s in just because, you know, I got to have a little bump in my ride. But other than that, I'm going to fix the rust. You know, get them scratches, get them scrapes fixed. See about that hood latch issue. Um, you know, get the inside detail, clean a whole bunch of dirt out. And once I do that, um, everything should pretty much fall in line with the car. Um, I'm not complaining about it. It's, it's actually a fun car. To, it's, it's actually a pretty fun car to uh, drive. Like I said, it's a pretty powerful car. <laughs> Is 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 more of a muscle type of car. It's not really a practical type of car, you know. So if you like to drive fast, and um, this is the car for you. If you like a little bit of muscle in your car, this is the car for you. But this is definitely the, the car that I would compare to a Corolla, or an Accord, or a Civic, or a Camry. This is a Chevy that I would compare to, like an Accord in 08 or a Civic in 08. Um, only because it's in the it's around the same type of reliability. It's kind of the same on gas. This one gets about 25 gallons. I'm sorry, 25 miles to the gallon. So it's pretty good. Um, but uh, other than that, um, yeah. So I guess I'm gonna go ahead and end it. This is Napalm. You're on Napalm 2009's channel. Um. If you have any type of questions about the car, or if you have any tips or hints that you can leave about the car, I would love to hear them. Um, please, leave them in the comments. Uh, even if it's something negative to say about the Cobalt. I saw, I, 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 I read a whole lot of negative um, about this car, too. Like I said, the mechanic, when I you know, took it to him, he told me, yeah, these cars normally have problems, man. I was like, oh boy. Um, but I think he was talking about the 05s up until like the 07s. I read uh, the 08s up to the 10s. They pretty much ironed out and solved a lot of problems that, that they that they had with the 05s up to like the 07s. Um, like a stability issue. Um, once again, just, you know, up, up under the car issue. Probably like, probably axle issues, probably framework issues. Um, some other problems that was definitely happening, like steering issues, some other problems that was definitely happening with the Cobalt before its 08 edition. And this is the year where they finally came out with a Cobalt that, that didn't have any serious, serious issue. Um, like I said, when I looked it up online, it said mainly interior electronic issues. So it didn't say anything about steering or, you know, wheels popping off or, you know, anything breaking. So I'm hoping, uh, that this car will last like I said this is only really the first vlog on this car uh, and it was actually a pretty rushed vlog but I'm gonna do a full detailed vlog on it of course when I when I do the work on it uh, do like some update videos I might try to put like a put a screen in it you never know like I said I don't want to show off put too much money into it but I do want it to the point where it it looks decent sitting in the parking lot you know um, I don't want to be the only person with big rust to put in my car, you know, and, uh, you know, everybody else has got, you know, nice, shiny, you know, expensive looking toys, and I'm the only one that's driving a rust bucket. But anyway, this was another vlog on my channel. I think I said that already. Uh, like and subscribe if you can. I do different vlogs on different topics. Uh, normally, I would do a vlog about my day or a vlog about something I've been thinking about. But this time I decided to do a car vlog because I know in the last video I said I had a new car. So I figured why not do an introductory video. Well, there it is, folks. You guys have a 
absolutely spectacular evening and make sure you always keep it cool.